listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to the Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Soleri and today we're going to talk about being persistent in life. If we're going for something, we want to give it our all, but how do we do that? And I want to give you that motivation to take that first step. So we're going to be taking your calls. Again, that number is 800-333-0001 and I'll be standing by to give you that motivation. Also, we're going to be joined in our next segment by Stephen Callahan. His story is not only inspiring, but wow, He was adrift at sea for 76 days on his own. He had to be persistent in finding different ways to stay alive. So you don't want to miss his story. It's really awesome. Also, if you want to hear more um, of our shows or even hear this one again, go to livingfullout.com. All the episodes will be waiting there for you. Also, if you have Alexa, you can check out Living Full Out Radio there. Or you can go to your, um, your app store. And you can just search Living Flat Radio and you can listen to us on the go. Lastly, if you have questions on today's topic, I want to make sure that you're supported. So please feel free to reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com and we can make sure to give you the coaching or resources that you need. Also, go to that same email address if you have an inspirational story that you'd like to share with our community because we're always looking for guests that can teach us those valuable life lessons. So again, though, today we are talking about being persistent in life and figuring out how do we do that? How do we get over an obstacle or a challenge that we face? And sometimes that's support of other people. Other times it's really just being and allowing ourselves to have some time to think and strategize. And if you do that, you will be able to take that first step, your second step, your third step, and feel confident along the journey. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we actually do have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi, thank you for calling in. How can I help you today? Um, My name is Connie, and my question is, what options do I have for finding companionship or love other than online dating? Mm, You know what, girl? I am there with you, right? Who doesn't want that love, (laughs) that butterflies, that, you know, feeling Mm -hmm. like someone's got your back? And and how do you find those people? Well, so here's a couple suggestions, okay? And it kind of all depends on your local area and, and what's possible, but... I think online dating is great, first of all. I know that's you want to look for other options beyond that. But what I do like about that is you do understand a lot about someone from their profile, from their pictures, before you take that first step, whether you email them or talk to them on the phone. Also, on your on your phone, um, if you go to the App Mm -hmm. Store, there's going to be a lot of different dating sites. There's going to be, gosh, uh, Coffee Meets Bagel and Bumble and Tinder and so many others that... You want to find the one that works for you and will okay. have matches that are in alignment with where you want to go in life. I also support um, meetup.com. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but if you go to meetup.com, no, it's actually a great way to meet friends as well as people you could potentially date. And the fun thing is some of those groups are social groups where others might okay. be uh, like hobbies, if you like volleyball or bowling or whatever. Um also, if you are looking to connect with like a spiritual side, your church, or mm-hmm. even single groups, if you just Google in your area, single groups, they're going to be there too. Okay. And lastly, I have had two different friends of mine meet somebody at lunch. So sometimes when we go out to eat, if we go with a friend, we're kind of talking uh-huh. to them the whole time, right? Or even if you go out right. with a girlfriend and you guys are mingling, you know, looking to meet other people it's still two of you or three of you, whoever you're with, and sometimes that can be intimidating. So what I suggest is sometimes you just want to go to lunch on your own or go to dinner on your own. Allow yourself the ability to freely talk to people or to be more approachable. But I think if you do any one of those and beyond, you will find a companion 
we shoot for love, right? But at least companionship <laughs> right. along the way. Okay. You that's, think you can try some of those? Ideas. Good, yeah, good. So well, well, you know, I'm a hopeless romantic myself, so I am wishing you all the best. And I love your spirit, so I know you're somebody's going to snag you. You're great. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in. I love okay, that she's great, looking thanks. to be persistent in life and figure out, you know, what do I need to do to find romance, to find that partner that I can run with? That is living full out all the way. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we have another call on the line. I'm going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for calling in. How can we help you? I I just have a question. I just moved from school to back home, and it's probably an eight-hour drive. I went to school in Iowa, and now I moved back home to Ohio, and I am currently in a long-distance relationship. And it's not just, like, I'm not just concerned about my significant other, but I also have friends that are back at school, too. And I am just wondering how am I supposed to maintain trust and loyalty in my friends and my significant other when I don't get to see them every day or talk to them as often as I usually did. Mm. Well, first of all, I'm sure that's hard on your heart. I'm sure there's some nights and weekends that you wish you could just be right there. You know what I mean? So I I hear you on that. What you want to do is you want to try to make special moments with those people. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple of ideas. Okay. And some will apply to your romantic partner. Some will apply to your friends. So sometimes... Writing somebody a note, it can be literally an index card, or you can go Mm -hmm. purchase a card and and pre-write it in advance and put it somewhere that they will find later. And when they find it, ta-da, surprise, and it's this really welcoming, positive note from you. You know, I wish you the best. I'm so proud of you. Something like that. That goes a long way. Um, Mm -hmm. Secondly, make a date over the phone. So if with your intimate partner or friends, you're used to watching a certain show, well, yeah. make a date of it. Eight o'clock on Friday, okay. each of you at your individual locations, pour a glass of wine, have a beer, watch the show together by phone. And that way you're really not missing a beat because it's what you would have done together anyway. Okay. Right. 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 Also in this day and age, you know, we got, if you have an iPhone, you can FaceTime, you can Skype. Mm-hmm. And so you want to kind of see those people as much as you can involve them in what you're doing it's okay to call a girlfriend and facetime them and say hey do you like this outfit what do you think it takes two minutes right right just involves them in your day i think if you do that although you're not physically together you're not missing out on those everyday moments it doesn't have to be a half an hour conversation it doesn't Mm -hmm. have to be you know that you're talking about something, you know, really big. It, like I said, just calling someone to say hi, texting them. Now, in return, I know that you want to know they're thinking of you, right? Right. Right. So you also yeah. want to kind of, like if you send them a text or you send them a uh, an email, make sure that you have kind of like a hook or a call to action at the end. What I mean by that is you want to be able to say to them, I hope your day is going well what are you doing today? Question mark. So that way they reply okay. back. That way you don't feel right. so lonely. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like one thing that I'm nervous about sometimes <laughs> is that I feel like with my friends, I feel like I'm doing more and then sometimes it's not reciprocated. And like, I know that my friends are in law school and training professionally and like working on applying to graduate school after they graduate from undergrad. But sometimes I just feel like they're just so caught up in their lives that sometimes I like miss out on these moments, you know? I do hear you on that. And the thing is, is keep in mind two things for me before we close up today. Keep in mind the only person that you can control is yourself and your actions. So you can long for other people to reciprocate and do what you do for them. But you just want to know that at the end of the day, at the end of your life, you were the best Mm -hmm. friend that you could be to people. You are the best okay, partner yeah. that you could be because you are the only person that can control your actions, your emotions, your behaviors. Secondly, right. now you need to start to diversify yourself with new friends. So you have all those people eight hours away, right? And you're going to nurture mm-hmm. those relationships and try to stay as close as you can. 
but now you need to bond with other people in your local area. And when you do that, there'll become this new balance where you won't be just desperately wanting that attention of the other people. You'll have other new friends to, to play with. Okay. okay. But if you do yeah. that, I know that you will feel complete. You'll feel whole. You'll, you'll be living full out. Okay. So okay. thank you yes, so thank much you. for calling in. Of course. Of course. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And for everybody listening, it's all about being persistent in life and just being, again, the best person that you can be, putting yourself out there, going after life in a big way. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be hurdles. There's going to be the unknowns. But if you're persistent, you can get over them. It's just about taking that one step at a time. So stay with us. We'll be coming right back after this break with our inspirational guest, Stephen Callahan. It's all about living full out. I'm Nancy Stellari. We'll be right back. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I'd like kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Tomorrow? (laughs) Let's check with Mom. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. (laughs) I'm going to return the kayak. Just make sure you have everything. Yep. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? 233 North Maple, please. It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Also, find fun activities to do like boating and biking or camping and hiking. Plus, much more. It's all right in your naturehood. Best day ever. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Don't you wish that getting your child to eat right, move more, and spend less time in front of a screen could be as easy as pushing a button? It might not be that simple, but you do have more power than you know. And you can maximize that power with proven strategies, tips, and tools from the National Institutes of Health's We Can, or Ways to Enhance Children's Activity and Nutrition program. We Can offers all kinds of resources, including fun recipes and activities the family can do together to show you the way to live a healthier lifestyle. We're not saying it's easy. We are saying that it can be done. Take the first step today. Call 1-866-359-3226 for a free We Can Parents Handbook. And be sure to visit the We Can website at wecan.nhlbi.nih.gov for free information, too. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then? And then nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over. Until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. 
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfulloutcom Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I am Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about being persistent in life. Sometimes we just want to put our hands in the air and give up, but we can't. We have to take the steps forward that we need to sometimes to survive and just get through the day or to survive in life. So our inspirational guest today, I selected him because he's a perfect person to talk about being persistent. Wow. His story is amazing. In the early 80s, he was adrift at sea after a ship got wrecked. And the thing is, is he didn't give up. He couldn't give up. He needed to survive. He had to think of creative ways to do so. So I'd very much like to welcome Stephen Callahan to the show. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Stephen. Hi. Hi. You know. Hi, how you doing? I'm good. And you know what, Stephen? I have to say, you're somewhere between like a MacGyver kind of guy and like a superhero. Because I don't know how (laughs) you did this. I. No, no, I'm telling you, if I'm ever like uh, in the woods or adrift at sea, I want you by my side or or at least want to be able to call you because you are amazing in what you did. But I want to kind of take our audience back just a bit because here you are in the early 80s. And again, this is where that MacGyver part comes in. You you create your own ship that your vessel that you're going to go out in and everything seemingly yeah. seems good. But what was the what was the incident? What happened? What was the storm? What caused it all to fall apart? Oh, uh, I'll never know for certain. I believe uh, I had a collision with uh, an underwater creature, most likely a whale. Uh, could have been a large shark or something like that. Um, I had actually I'd built the boat in uh, left the United States in early 1981 and spent spent almost a year on the boat crossing the Atlantic and I was on my way home and I got about a week out and uh, the weather was pretty bad but uh, not as bad as I had seen before for sure um, so I was uh, I don't know I was just kind of rumbling along uh, I had sail shortened and thought uh, I'd be just continuing my voyage uh, in a, a, you know, another month being in the Caribbean, but uh, that wasn't to be about about midnight on February 4th and 82, um, and just a big smack in the side of the boat filled up with water. And uh, I don't know, to make, make a very long story very short, uh, basically lived, uh, I had to learn how to live like an aquatic caveman for about two and a half months. Wow. And and the thing is, here you are, middle of the night when this happens, and that, you know, come on, at least give yourself daytime light, right? You're in the middle of the night, and this occurs. And when you, when when the ship was kind of filling up with water, and you knew that you had to get into your, you know, your, your life boat, and, and, and kind of jump ship, your instincts took play, though, because you knew that you needed to be, a, be able to survive. So you actually jumped out of your life preserver boat and you went back into the sinking ship. And what did you get? What supplies were you going for? Oh, I was going for the basics. Um, you know, things like uh, bad injury or hypothermia or loss of body heat uh, can kill you in minutes. And uh, then after that, it's uh, lack of water and finally food. Um, so... I had a life raft, which I was able to float off the side of the boat, uh, but of course stay attached to it as long as I could, uh, and dove down inside. And I got some critical bits of gear. I had a a bag full of emergency equipment specifically for this eventuality. And I got that out. I got a piece of cushion, uh, which would provide some pretty welcome insulation, a sleeping bag, even though it was completely sodden also helped uh, protect me for a while, but it was really mostly the equipment uh, bag that had all kinds of little goodies in it, uh, solar stills that would produce almost all of my salt, uh, all of my fresh water, and uh, a spear gun, uh, as well as some things that I considered critical, a um, little pad of paper and pencils and, and things like that, so I could keep a, keep a log, and, and if not uh, in reality, at least in my head, uh, consider the voyage just a continuation and a more modest craft rather than an end in itself. So um, all those things are very important to me. 
I imagine that was very hectic and multiple trips to get all those items into your uh, Yeah, it was, it was pretty chaotic. The waves were, oh, I don't know, probably on an average about 10 feet or, or so. So they were sweeping across the whole boat. The boat was pretty much full of water, but it didn't sink out right. I had uh, watertight compartments I had designed into the boat. And the way the boat went down, nose, the whole the whole basically two-thirds of the boat was completely submerged, um, but the back end was up a little bit, and it, it gave me that chance to get back aboard and, and get my equipment. Um, but before daylight, um, I was broken away from the boat. Uh, it was kind of like the, the boat full of water is like a huge anchor, um, and I was in a you know inflatable raft, um, which was sort of bobbling across the the, uh, the the top of the water, if you will, and and so all the breaking seas were would hit the raft, and it'd be kind of like being in an auto accident every few minutes. So uh, wow. it was kind of a mix, like everything in a survival situation. Um, there's the good and the bad, a sort of yin yang balance and things. And so as I went drifting off, I was very aware that. I, uh, it was pretty unfortunate that I couldn't be probably further away from land in the Atlantic Ocean, um, so wow. I had a long, long way to go, but at least I was in the, um, uh, the trade wind belt, and uh, so with the winds and the currents, it should push me pretty steadily to the, uh, to the west and end up back basically in the Caribbean where I was headed to begin with. Well, that's a good thing. Go waves. That's good. <laughs> they were in your yeah, favor. Yeah. Now, yeah, of you know, course, the if I could have gone also... across the wind to the if I could have gone across the wind to the Cabo Verde Islands, uh, it, it it was a, a lot. It was only a, a few hundred miles away, so that would have been a lot easier than drifting two thousand. That would miles be to the just west. too easy. Too easy. Yes, we have to make it yeah. harder for you, right? Because you like a good yeah. challenge. But the thing that I also think is so amazing is just like the fact that you had to catch your own. You know, food, or, you know, fish and birds. And- yeah, well, actually, you know, I, I wrote a book called Adrift, which was, which, uh, in, in which I look at it anyway, as, as, as I am the kind of clumsy human observer, uh, completely out of my element. Um, and the stars of the, show are re- of the show are really the environment, the fish and, and so on. And this is what happens uh, in, in, in ocean survival situations, because you're floating very slowly, basically, with the current, just a little bit faster with the wind. And so as far as sea creatures are concerned, you're kind of stable there. And uh, an ecosystem develops uh, around the raft. So fish started gathering around the raft within a few days um, and uh, eventually built to the school. So I basically became a fish farmer. I my my raft, which I, I named Rubber Ducky, um, uh, really was kind of the center of Duckyville. I consider myself sort of the mayor of Duckyville. And, uh, <laughs> you know what, I would, Stephen? You know, I I want to I want to pause there because I want to know more about Duckyville, but I have to go to a commercial break. Okay, okay so sure. I want you to stay with us, and as we journey along with Stephen's story again. He did eventually get saved, but there was a whole lot of days in there, 76 of them before that happened. So stay with us. It's all about being persistent today in life, and that's a large element of what it takes to live full out. So stay with us. I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show, and we'll be right back. Listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. There are many sounds in your day to day life. There are sounds that wake you up, sounds that make you smile, sounds that energize you, and sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. 
For more information, visit ready.gov slash alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Hello, my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Just the bare necessities of life. So eat right, be active, (laughs) and have fun. Yeah, man. For your own path to a healthier you, visit MyPyramid.gov. This is really living. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ag Council. Hi, my name is Nancy Solari, host of the Living Full Out Show. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want and we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out Radio Show. It's important to us that we put out really inspiring programming, but we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips when you need us most. We never know when those challenges are going to come, when we're going to feel lonely and need that motivation. So just know that when you need us, we're here for you. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. Here's to you living full out. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Solari, and today we are having our inspirational guest, Stephen Callahan, on the show, who's sharing with us his journey about being adrift for 76 days and what he needed to do to survive, because today we're talking about being persistent in life and just doing what is required to not only survive, but achieve our dreams and goals. So I'd very much like to welcome Stephen back to the show. Yeah, Hello, hi. Stephen. Hi. hi. So... We're talking today about being persistent in life, and I'm sure as you sat there for 76 days, day in, day out, catching your fish and catching your birds and just doing everything that was needed to survive, was there any time, well, I'm sure there are a lot of times, but what was the biggest time when you were like, I give up, I give up? Well, actually, I could, it was sort of uh, two, two parts to that answer. The first mm-hmm. is uh, uh, not only with my experience, but a lot of the survivors and I've spoken with over the years. Um, you know, a lot of times you can get out of the immediate threat. You know, your house is burning down and you get out or, or um, in my case, you know, I got out of the boat 
um, in, into my life raft. And then I entered into what's sometimes called a period of recoil. I call it disorientation and fear because it's like your whole normal life has gone away. And you're not really sure, like, how, am, how on earth am I going to live out here? And it was a, it, so the first two weeks for me were um, a very difficult period of recoil um, in kind of heavy depression, going through my life, uh, realizing all of my failures, all of my shortcomings, um, the real time of, of looking inward at, at, at everything you've ever done wrong in your life. And that was tough to get through, and that's just a matter of kind of working through it one step at a time, solving problems one step at a time, until I kind of got to a stage of adaptation where I could have gone on for almost indefinitely. I would figured out how to catch food and produce water and keep my raft going and all that other kind of stuff. But then on the 43rd day, um, I had a, a very critical problem um, when, because I was fishing for the, my food using a spear gun. Um, and uh, the fish, which we often know as mahi-mahi or Dorado fish um, or dolphin fish, they're big and pretty powerful, and uh, I was, of course, in an inflated raft, and the worst, they kept breaking the spear gun in various ways, and I tied it back together, and it, on the 43rd day, it broke the shaft of the spear gun and put a big hole in the bottom tube, and it took me, it's, it's really complicated to explain, so I'm not going to try to do that, but basically it took me 10 days of just not being able to produce water properly or fish, and it, it was just a total disaster, and, and um, finally uh, I, I figured out an answer, but I just about had given up. Um, I laid in the bottom of the raft and just thought, oh, that this is it, I'm not going any further, but after kind of breaking down uh, a bit in... Uh, uh, I don't know, not really having a tantrum, but but just feeling completely gone. Um, I kind of slapped myself awake because uh, I realized I, I wasn't talking about it. I was right on the edge, and um, mm. and, and and I had to figure out a, a solution to the problem. And it turned out to, that I I finally did. Um, it would have been would have been lovely if I'd had company at that time because I'm sure they would have been a lot sure. brighter than I was and figured it out. Well, thank you for sharing that with us and, and the emotions that you went through because, again, whether it's being in a life raft or going through financial difficulties or breakups, you know, we all have those moments in life. And when you watch a show like, you know, gosh, it shows where a survival is required, you know, and are there triggers today that you still face where it kind of takes you back to that moment? Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Quite frequently, I mean, in the years since I've, you know, I've I've dealt with uh, a, a lot of survivors, uh, interviewing them, doing shows with them, mm-hmm. um, and survival experts and whatnot. Adrift is really something that comes into my life every day on both a practical matter and uh, um, and sort of an emotional one too. I, you know, we. I don't think I'm that unusual in terms of, you know, this is a long time ago and I complain about things now when I really shouldn't and and stuff like that. But overall, you know, I, I value water in a very different way than I ever did before. You know, I just know the value of, you know, a tub full of water or even a glass full of water. Um, things like that, they, th- those never change. I know I don't forget what it felt like to starve. It's given me a different kind of empathy for um, for people. Actually, um, you know, my wife said that that the experience kind of opened me opened me to the universe, and and I feel like mm. it really did in a lot of ways. Um, well, so, and, and, uh, I, and it, I know it, it, it can, you know, sometimes it'll be unexpected mm-hmm. things like uh, people showing each other kindness uh, and mm-hmm. empathy and understanding and things like that will just be touching. Because those are the things that I so, uh, I don't know, I so missed and, and realized I'd so failed at in my misspent youth. So wow. um, it, it comes up in a lot of ways in, in, in uh, pretty much every day. Well, when it comes to the shipwreck tragedy box of life, check, you've done it, okay? But <laughs> yeah, that's true. in 2012, you were challenged once again. You went through leukemia, and obviously yeah. you're with us today, so you're still in that recovery process. But what was harder, the shipwreck or fighting leukemia? Oh, um, it's impossible to say, actually. They were both... Pr- 
pretty difficult. Um, different in, in many respects in terms of the obvious, you know, I was all by myself in the middle of the, the ocean, whereas with leukemia, I had to be completely dependent on uh, technology and other people, um, which, was, which was different. Um, but um, otherwise, you know, going through similar stages of the survival experience, um, uh, going through a period of recoil again and adaptation and all those things. Another big difference, of course, is that uh, illness um, is more of a chronic situation, especially me at my age. I, w- I, spent, I spent my 30th birthday riding a, a life raft in the middle of the ocean and my 60th birthday riding a hospital bed. So oh. yeah, my, my life's kind of divvied up in these nice uh, 30-year units, and uh, I consider my life sort of a three-act three uh, play and the first two acts were the thirty and the sixties, the the first thirty years, the second thirty years, and now I'm kind of in the final act. Um, so the illness never goes away. You just try to deal with it as a, uh, a compatriot of mine who's also been very ill, you know. And I often discuss, you know, you just have to learn how to accept those things that you can't change. You know, the serenity prayer. I think I'm not a uh, a religious person per se, but I, I think there's no wiser prayer than the serenity prayer. You know, I love that you gave us that, that note, that gift, because people can, in our audience here can, can look that up. And we're talking today about being persistent in life. And when you look back at the shipwreck and all that you needed to do to be persistent, to stay alive, or when you look at, you know, fighting leukemia and all the things that were required for you to stay alive, what advice do you have for our audience today in what they need to do to be persistent or how to even start? Oh, you know, it's a, such a huge subject, really, and you, you know it very well yourself. But uh, I don't know, it's uh, I don't know, a number of things. Um, uh, one thing is to, you know, for me, the arts have always been very important. Um, so, like, keeping a log, um uh, doing drawing, writing, you know, keeping a journal, any of those things really helped me to kind of be able to at least psychologically step away from the scene and, and observe it from almost a third person's point of view. And it allowed me to do things like to prioritize uh, what were my essential needs uh, as a as opposed to wants, because wants were right out the window. If I if I could just satisfy my needs, that was important. To normalize life as much as possible, and, you know, it seems like your whole world has gone away, um, but there are a lot of things that you can retain, um, it, whether it was in the hospital or the life raft, things like keeping a sense of humor and finding finding reasons to laugh. I, I, we found reasons to laugh every day while I was in the hospital. The nurses had seen it all, and uh, they're great people, great compassion. And that's another thing, is just opening oneself up to the positives that are around oneself. You can get so weighed down with all the negatives, but, you know, I was just so touched by all the compassion and dedication of all the people who helped me get through leukemia. And for that matter, when I was in the life raft, um, you know, I I was so grateful to all the people who had gone before me, uh, many of whom never never showed up again, but all the survivors who helped to uh, shape the survival equipment I, I was using and, and all those sorts of things. You know, I, I, I say there's no such thing as a self-made man. You know, we, we often use that term, but we all stand on thousands of people, if not billions of people's shoulders who have given us the world we have now. So, um, I don't know. Finding gratitude is is important, even in the deepest of times, to me. Um, yeah. For you know, my wife who cared for me and all these other things. Um, uh, such, I, such I, I'm not advice. sure. There, there are a lot of other other concrete steps uh, that one can one can take, uh, strategies one can use. But those are mm-hmm. kind of important to keep in mind. No, you know what? You've opened my eyes wider today, and I'm listening clearly and. And I'm with you. I'm with you. All those were great tips. And as we round out the interview today, because I just have seconds left, I'm just so curious. As you're waiting there for 76 days and you're kind of in starvation mood, what's that Mm -hmm. first meal that you had on a humorous (laughs) front? What were you longing for? Well, actually, the first thing they, you know, the, uh, these fishermen came out to find me. As I say, the fish were, you know, kind of the stars of the shore. They, they nourished me. They became my companions. They almost killed me at one point. And in the end, they brought my salvation by drawing birds to the raft. And the fishermen who came out uh, gave me a coca sucra, which was 
just raw coconut boiled in sugar. And that was the most amazing thing I think I've wow. ever had in my life. But beyond that, was it a burger? Was it a pasta? No, you know, because <laughs> for well, 76 days, I'd be thinking of that perfect meal. Yeah, well, I don't know. They took me to a hospital uh, on on the small island, and they brought yeah. in a tray of food, and it had um, all these beautiful root crops, uh, all the things I, you know, I, I not totally not lacked quite the see. vision, not not quite the vision of what you were thinking. But Stephen, well, we no, actually was, have to wrap. Stephen, we actually have to wrap up. But I could talk to you for hours. But I want to thank you so much for being on today's show. I uh, really, you are well, you are my hero, and we appreciate you. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nancy, and good luck to everybody out there who's all going to, if haven't been through it, are going to be going through their own survival. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. And everybody will be coming right back, taking your calls. It's the Living Full Out Show, all about being persistent. And that was Stephen Callahan. What an amazing man. Check out Adrift. You don't want to miss it. And uh, we'll be right back after this break. Stay with us. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, What? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. The following message is about Medicaid and CHIP, free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. Enrollment is open year-round. Hey, voice lady, give me the mic. Um, okay. Hey, DJ, let's switch up the music. That's better. So listen up, moms and dads out there. There are these programs called Medicaid and CHIP. They offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids. Things like doctor and dentist visits, prescriptions, and shots are covered. All the stuff that keeps kids like me healthy and in charge. So, as you can tell, a covered kid is a confident kid. And it means confident parents, too. To learn more about affordable health coverage for your family, visit healthcare.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. That's 1-877-543-7669. Yep, you could do something big for your family today because enrollment is open year-round. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And Sophia. They're going to jump out of trees. You can't stop them. They'll go down the slide head first. They'll make parachutes out of sheets. They'll balance on things that are impossible to balance on, like the back of a couch or a windowsill or a scooter seat. They'll run with sharp objects. They'll run into walls. They'll climb things that won't hold their weight. They'll put their fingers in places where they could get smashed. They'll drive their tricycles down steep hills. They'll bounce balls off their faces. They'll step on each other. They'll jump on each other. They'll invent whole new ways to put themselves in jeopardy. But one of the most dangerous things kids will do happens while they're sitting perfectly still. Kids who ride in a car without a booster seat are much more likely to suffer serious or fatal injury during a crash than kids in boosters. But amazingly, 80% of all kids who need them aren't in them. After a toddler seat and until they're four foot nine, boost your kids and don't let them down. Go to BoosterSeat.gov to learn more about the importance of boosters. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Have you ever lost a cat? And have you ever wanted to get your cat back after you lost it? I'm Andrew Hoffman. I invented the lost cat magnet. Just turn it on and lost cats stick to it. Just listen to one satisfied cat. That's proof. You should invent stuff too. But remember, don't do a lost cat magnet. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, the National Inventors Hall of Fame Foundation, and the Ad Council. We are your pets, and this song's dedicated to those people who don't have health insurance yet. Enroll, we say, we want you to be okay. Enroll, we say, take care, people, for goodness sake. 
Health insurance is now affordable and covers prescriptions, hospitalizations, and preventive care. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn more. And take care, people. Brought to you by Get Covered America and the Ad Council. To be persistent in life means that you want to have clear focus of what are you striving for? What is that goal and dream? Then from there, you want to put together a strategy, the how-to, the plan. And then from there, remember to always enjoy the journey. Some things are going to be positive and others are negative. But the life lessons are ones that you can't purchase. They're meant to be lived. It's all about living life full out and being persistent. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And we've been talking about being persistent in life and and what is required to not just move our own lives forward, but also be a support for other people. And sometimes we need to be that persistent wind to help move another one to where they need to go. So I'm getting word from our caller that we have a caller on the line. Hello. Are you there? Welcome to Living Hello. Out Show. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you for joining us. How Hi, can we help Nancy. you today? Hi. What's going on today? Hello. How can we help you? Uh, yes, my name's Maria, and I was calling because I have a problem, mm-hmm. and maybe you can help me with it. <clears throat> Some years ago, my brother, my oldest brother, was killed by the police, and he left some kids, and his wife died of cancer. Why well, ended up with the four kids? Now his kids are having kids, and uh, one of them I, um, is, has a little two-year-old boy and a five-year-old girl and the little girl clings to me a lot and you know i'm her grandmother because you know her grandmother's not here and her grandfather's not here and so um my nephew has really bad parenting skills and i have excellent ones because i've been in parenting classes like forever because of my kids uh, my oldest is 37, and uh, my youngest is 23, so I already went through this. Right. And it's just really, really hard. I wish they would just give her to me, you know? But that's so, not realistic. So, where, so that's so where what my is problem the ch- is. So, is, so, so where, what is the challenge? What is the question? Well, the question is, I don't know how to approach that. You know, she's with me, like, Monday through Friday, and she's getting... You know, the top of the line care. <laughs> and then on the weekend, she goes home and she yeah. gets like scolded and just everything the opposite of what I'm teaching her. And I so wish here, they would give her to me, but that's not going to happen. And I'm kind right. of stuck there. Well, so here's the thing. Honestly, you can only control what you can during the time you have her because, like you said, they're not going to give you to her. But I think it's okay that she has that balance. Sure, it's it, we, we wish she was treated better, but at the same time, it's going to help build her thick skin. It's going to help her understand different ways that people are are tested and and in some ways punished or even scolded or just sometimes the guidelines that you have to stay within. If you only have one parent and you only know one way, then you don't learn the other way. And I grew up with parents that were divorced. So when I was with my dad, it was one way. And his attitude and the way that he cared for me was way different than my mom. And so I grew up seeing that balance. And I could then further decide who I wanted to be as an adult, how I wanted to nurture people. So I really believe that you just want to give her the best of you. And teach her everything that you can about becoming a woman and just enjoying life and finding her passions and all of that. And believe it or not, she is going to learn from being with her dad and her other family on the weekends. Because the thing is, there's 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 qualities of that that she's going to learn, too. Do you see that? You, You can't control all the elements, but you can definitely maximize the time that you have. You see that? Okay. 
Now, okay. I know that's not yeah. I know that's not a perfect answer, but I want you to set yourself free from that responsibility because you've done it, girl. You have raised a lot of kids, okay? So you got her five days a week and you just give that five days a week your all. But then you're off. On the weekends, you're off. And it's time to be Maria and do things for you. Because remember, there's you too, okay? So I want you to okay. pull out as well. But thank you so much for calling in. Thank you, Maria. Okay. So, ev- so everybody that's calling in today, such great questions about how to be persistent in your life. And as we kind of wind down the show today, I really want you to visualize where do you want to be in life? What do we need to do to get you there? Let's be persistent together. So feel free to reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com for resources. We want to make sure that you're supported. Again, if you want to hear this show again, go to livingfullout.com. You can check out the episode again or go to Alexa or the App Store to hear the show. Whatever you need so that you can stay inspired. The entire Living Full Out family, we have Rich and Aaron and Riley and Brianna and Camille and so many people that are just dedicated to making sure that you know that we're right there beside you every step of the way. And I adore you. I believe in you. And just go out there, be persistent, live your life full out in the biggest way possible. And yes, there's going to be times that we're going to fall down. And you just have to remember to pick yourself right back up. Because again, what is that? That's being persistent. And that is what the game of life is all about. So here's to you living full out, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Solari. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.